Okay, here we have all the supplies that I'm going to need to paint today. I have my paper, I have my Sharpie. I chose to grab two different paint brushes, a flat and a round. I also have a pencil. Very important, I have a napkin or paper towel, some water, and I've got my watercolors. So today we're going to start with learning the wet and wet method. And the wet and wet method is something that you probably haven't done before. Um, traditionally, the way folks learn how to use watercolor is they start out with a brush and they get their brush wet, they stick it in a color, and then they paint. So that is actually the dry method and what I'm gonna teach you today is the wet on wet method. So first, let's start with the basics. I'm going to stick my brush into some clean water. And then here I just have a wet brush with clean water. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully paint this wet with this wet brush, which and I'm gonna carefully paint clear water in the area where I want to paint. So I'm being really careful not to go outside of the lines. And how I like to refer to this is that I'm licking my paper. Now I call it licking because it's a very thin layer of water and it's not a puddly drool. So a puddly drool would be like a big drop of water that you probably can't see on there. But if there's a big drop of water, then I have less control over the watercolor. Really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be in control of where the color goes and where it doesn't go. So the watercolor will not go anywhere I don't lick. So let's show you. I'm gonna take a little bit of my paint. I'm gonna wake it up a little bit more. And then I'm gonna paint right here, right on the edge. And what do you notice? The watercolor is spreading out. And you can see even where I touched it right close to the line, it's spreading away into the circle, but it's not spreading across the circle. So you can see that I did not get outside of the circle wet. Now this is going to be really important when we talk about working in Zentangle because you've all spent a lot of energy on your lines and you want to make sure that you're honoring your lines. So here's a wash, really simple. All you've got to do is lick the paper and paint. And what you might also notice, because I've licked the paper ahead of time, my, um, this wash, as it dries, it's going to be all one color. It's not going to be um, what you can see up here. Um, can you see that up there? What you can see up here is that I've got darker areas and then lighter areas and you can actually see my brush strokes. So um, in preparation for today, we're going to do wash, ombre, blend, and wet and dry. In my preparation for wet on dry, I'm going to actually paint a wash over the wet on dry so that later, it'll be dry. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna clean my brush 
and I'm gonna lick that circle. So here I am, I'm giving you two demonstrations of the wet on wet method of wash because I'm gonna start this wash the same, this wet, I'm sorry, I'm gonna start this wet on dry with a wash. So I'm going to lick And then I'm gonna grab a color. Let maybe I'll grab this pink this time. And then I'm gonna paint. So um, for the sake of this demonstration, it really doesn't matter what colors I'm using, but it does matter that I stay within the lines because this assignment is not only going to show me, do you have control of the water and the color? It's also going to show me, can you stay within your lines? So not only do you know how to use the watercolor, in terms of using the wet and wet method, but also can you stay in the lines honoring the work that you've done thus far. So what I recommend now is pressing pause and trying out wash. Okay, now we're back and we're going to do ombre. Now ombre starts the exact same way as wash and it starts with, guess what? Licking the paper. So I'm going to take, here, why don't I actually, I'm gonna swap brushes and just to show you what a round brush will do. Um, it works pretty similarly. I didn't do a great job cleaning my brushes last time. I can see a little bit of leftover tint my general rule is the larger the area, the larger the brush, the smaller the area, the smaller the brush. So um, I could use a larger brush if I wanted. Um, with watercolor, I personally prefer using smaller brushes. I'm not sure why. It's just my preference. But for most of you, you know what ombre is. Ombre is going from a dark color to a light color. So for this, I'm going to choose a dark blue. And I'm gonna wake up that color by adding water. And I'm gonna really, really, you can see I'm really, spending a lot of time working my brush into the pigment. That's gonna give me a nice darker tone of this medium toned color. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna paint the top third-ish of my circle. Again, I'm trying very hard to stay in my lines. Now, the next step I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this same brush and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the brush and drag it across the top of my water container. And then without adding any new paint, I'm going to take the bottom of that color before and bring some down. Now I'm going to clean my brush, wipe it across the side of my container so that I don't have any drips and I'm going to grab the bottom of the previous one and bring it down. See, I'm bringing just that edge down. 
I'm going to come up here and make sure I fill in that little empty space. Now, guess what? I'm going to clean my brush, drag the cut along my edge, and just grab the berry bottom. Some people like to actually angle their paper so that the water sort of by gravity pulls the color down. Um, I personally, I don't know, I like working flat with my watercolor paper, so you have a choice on that one. What I did notice when I went, dragged it down, is that I've got a puddle at the bottom of there. Can you see that? It's a little puddle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and dry it on my paper towel. And all I'm doing, I'm not squeezing it, I'm just sort of guiding it across. And then now my brush can function like a sponge. And watch, it'll just pull that water up. And that's a more strategic way than sometimes people use the paper towel directly on the painting. I like to use a, paper, a paintbrush. I'm gonna take some of that. I'm using the paintbrush along the paper towel one more time. And then I'm gonna pull the rest of that extra water that I don't need. Because again, I am in control of where the water goes. Okay, so that's ombre. Press pause on your video and try ombre. Okay, we are back and we're going to do blend. Now blend is blending one color into another color. So let's say I wanted to shift from red to blue. Okay, um, this, is, this is what we would call blend. Guess what I'm going to do first? Yep, I'm gonna lick the paper. So let's get a nice even layer of water in my inside my circle and being really careful not to get it outside. You might notice that I changed brushes. Um, I didn't like that other brush quite as much. It's an older brush and some of the bristles were kind of yucky. Um, so, here we go. And if you want to sort of check how your water is, you can actually move the paper around and you'll be able to see that it's kind of shiny. And what I notice, and I you probably can't notice on this video, is that I have sort of a it's licked over here, but over here, it, it's kind of um, drooly, a little puddle. So again, I'm going to use my paper towel to suck out some of the water, and I'm just gonna pull some water up with my paintbrush. Okay, so we're gonna try for a transition from red to blue. So I'm going to wake up this red. I'm going to paint the top half. And you can see it's really spreading out. Then I'm going to load my brush up with a blue. And I'm going to start from the bottom. Now I 
don't know why. I've been doing demos like this for years. And I always pick red to blue and someone always says, hey, it looks like the Pepsi symbol. So there you go. I don't know if I just love Pepsi, which I don't drink, um, or what. But there you go. That reminds you of the Pepsi symbol. You're not alone. So then I'm going to clean my brush. Now you can see they're already starting to blend. But I'm going to clean my brush and wipe it across the top of my container. And I'm going to drag my brush very lightly perpendicular to the line of where they touch. And that seemed to have made it a little worse. <laughs> but we'll see how it dries. Different watercolors um, react differently on different kinds of paper. So maybe it wasn't even necessary for me to do the blending. But I like doing it. So that's why I did it. So that's blend. Take this opportunity to pause your video and practice blend. Okay, now we're ready for wet on dry. Now, wet on dry is um, fun, especially with something like our Calavetta project, because, um, or a Zentangle project, because here we get the opportunity to have more than one color and they don't necessarily have to blend. So here, remember, I already did this nice pink wash. It's, um, the paper is dry. Generally, the rule to figure out whether or not your paper is dry or not you're not supposed to touch it with the front of your finger because we've all got oils on the front of our fingers, but you touch it with the back of your finger. And if the paper feels cool, even if it doesn't look wet, it just feels cool, it's not dry. But this paper feels pretty normal. So let's imagine that I have a Zentangle pattern <clears throat> right on top that I've painted right on top of this Zentangle pattern. I didn't mean for this to happen, but it sort of looks like an Easter egg. So I feel compelled to do something about that. I'm gonna change it a little bit. I, I don't know if that worked. Maybe it still looks like an Easter egg. Okay, now this is a little bit backward compared to what you're doing because you've already got your Zentangle patterns drawn on your paper. But for our purposes, for the demo, this is what we've done. So I have a Zentangle pattern and I've colored the area one color, but I'd like to emphasize some of the um, design work. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab my round brush again. Even though I don't like it as much, I need to, I'm grabbing my round brush because I want, I'm gonna do something really detailed and I want it to, um, I want it to come to a point. So let's, um, let's grab this blue color just because I've used it before. Now, the thing about watercolor is that you can always go darker, but you can't go lighter so easily. So 
If you're going to do this wet on dry method, choose a light color that you intend to put dark colors on top. So now I'm going to go old school. I'm not going to pre-lick the paper. I'm just going to paint directly onto it. And because I'm doing this in sort of smaller areas, I'm less concerned about brush strokes because I can more capably fill in the areas and it not look too strokey. I don't know if strokey is a word, but you get what I mean. So you'll see that because I didn't lick the area, the, oops, I just made a tiny mistake. Um, the paint is just going directly where I've put it. It's not blending out anywhere, although it is a tiny bit there. I'm gonna clean my brush and then I'm gonna get a different color. Now, um, let's get this uh, purpley red color. You are invited to mix your colors if you want or use them straight. That's super up to you as an artist. And you've got different color, uh, size brushes, so you can use a really tiny brush for working in tiny areas if you prefer. So let's say I'm going to do these lines. Now, one thing to remember is that when it is wet, when one area is wet, you don't want to go paint right next to it because then you'll end up with blend, right? And that's not what we want in this moment. I don't want anything to blend. I'm trying to emphasize the details in my work. Um, because I think it looks cool. So then maybe for the last one, maybe I'll add one little, maybe some purple. And I can paint in, wow, that purple's really dark. I can paint in those little dots. Now, you don't have to paint in your designs like I'm painting them in, but it just, I wanted you to practice this so if you felt like it would work with your project and with your Zentangle pattern, you had the ability to do so. So here we go. We've now practiced wash ombre, blend, and you're going to go try wet on dry. Have fun.